Alrighty, guys, welcome back in. I'm going to give everyone a couple seconds to, uh, to join the party here before we uh, get moving, rocking and rolling. Uh, I didn't say this on the live broadcast because uh, that live broadcast is tape delayed. Uh, we will be closed for Labor Day um, tomorrow on Monday. Um, I didn't want to say we're closed tomorrow and then have it play a week later some other city and then, oh, I guess they're closed today for some reason. Uh, so we are closed for Labor Day uh, tomorrow. Uh, a couple things. Uh, I always like to share new techie things that are kind of fun. If you're going to be in the uh, in the Omaha area um, anytime, you know, in the next however long, and you want to have something fun to try, something different to try, um, there's all kinds of fall stuff that's going to be happening, so there'll be plenty to do outside. So maybe you want to save this for when it's a little cold outside or something. But there's a new virtual reality um, arcade in Omaha. It's at 98th and Giles. It's called Infinite Loop, uh, infiniteloopvr.com. Uh, but you can go ahead and uh, and go in there, and they put the goggles on your head and everything. And then when you uh, are playing in there, you're in your own little world. So it's like 30 bucks an hour to play, basically, which, you know, yeah, it's 30 bucks an hour to play a video game. But it's kind of cool because you're wearing a $1,500 VR headset on your head that you're not going to go buy at home, you know. Um, and you go in there, and you, there's zombie shoot games, and there's... Uh, my son was playing, uh, and my wife got some video of him just jumping around like a complete moron. <laughs> he was playing uh, Fruit Ninja. If you've ever played Fruit Slice on your phone, that's where the fruit comes down from the top of the screen, and you have to slice the slice in the way that they say, so you have to slice diagonal or slice up, down, sideways, left, right, and only slice the things you're supposed to slice. So th imagine now Fruit Ninja in a 3D environment where the fruit is coming at you, it's coming down, it's coming up, and it's coming all around you. So you have to keep your head on a swivel and see where all the fruit's at and slice it the way. And there's some pieces of fruit you have to bounce to keep in the air, you know, while you're doing all this stuff. Um, and so inside the game, you're in your own little world, and you're looking you're looking like, wow, you know, I'm doing everything, I'm, I'm keeping the fruit in the air. From outside, you look like a flailing idiot, okay? <laughs> Now, I played the zombie shooter game. I went with my son, and we tried it out. And I played the zombie shooter game. It took a little while to, to figure out the controls and to get used to, like, how you had to kind of hold your hand like this to hold the gun straight. It wasn't like this. It was like this. So, you know, first few shots went a little wide there. But after a while, we were popping zombie brains. It was great. Uh, so, anyway... Uh, it's a fun thing to do. So if you're looking for something tech-wise that's fun to do in town, uh, check it out. InfiniteLoopVR.com is the name. You book online, so you have an actual reservation for your session. It's very much like a restaurant. So you book online. They reserve the rooms for you, and they have all these different things. I would just buy the generic basic one at first just to get used to it to see if you like it. And then there's more competitive things that go forward uh, going forward in the future. All righty. I could get the latest tech and change frequently to something newer. Example, okay. Is rebooting your phone simply a matter of turning it off and on? Yes, Joe. Uh, rebooting your phone is simply a matter of turning it off and on again. You shut the phone down, you turn it back on, that'll reboot it. For those of you who are joining us that were not present during the regular show, um, Apple users were hit with a huge vulnerability since 2016. All you have to do is go to a website, an infected website, and it will load a virus basically into the memory of your iPhone not the storage, into the memory. And memory gets wiped every time you reboot your phone. So all you have to do to free yourself of this is reboot your phone. But the problem is nobody's known that this has even been happening since 2016. And so all, all the whole keychain was stolen. All passwords were taken, photos were taken. So if you have an iPhone and you got hit with this, everything on your phone got taken. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it. You don't know where it is or who has it or, or what, what they're doing with it. Uh, but if you've had some unexplained password breaches and you have an iPhone over the last few years and you surf around a lot on the Internet, maybe you use that iPhone or that iPad as your primary Internet device and you don't have any antivirus on it, now you know where those password breaches came from. They stole your keychain and they were selling your keychain on the dark web. Um, so anyway, the uh, computer, uh, let's get into that. I have some questions for you. So the computer rental idea is actually <clears throat> complex and hard. Um, so let's start with the easier one. We potentially have a trade show in our future here. We'll see how things go with Best of Omaha. But the time to plan for that is now. Uh, we need to order swag if we're going to get swag in time for a September, October, November trade show. Um, so what should we give away at the table? Everybody does pens. Oh, yes, we'll have pens because everybody has pens. Um, and we have a few of the Schrock backpacks left, uh, maybe like a couple hundred of them. Not enough to do a whole trade show, but enough that we're going to bring them along. And you now the first 200 people to the Schrock booth get a free backpack because that's all we have left. Yay! Uh, so we'll give away backpacks. But you're, I want to give something away at the booth 
that people will find useful, that they will actually desire, that will want. You know, look, look a letter opener, Mom, because we open so many letters now. Hey, look, it's a letter from Grandma. You know, I mean, so I can give you a letter opener. You know, <laughs> what 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 do you want? I guess so. I came up with the suggestion that it's been a very long time since we've done Schrock Innovations mouse pads. I mean, it's been over a decade since we've done a Schrock Innovations mouse pad. And I think it would be good to do one. Uh, I think people still use mouse pads. The lovely Kimberly disagreed. She said that people don't use mouse pads anymore. Nobody uses mouse pads anymore because, you know, with all the the laser mice and stuff, you don't, I'm not using a mouse pad. I can mouse on my hand. I can mouse on my shoulder. I can mouse on the back of my neck. I can mouse anywhere I want. And unless you have a reflective surface like a, like a desk made of glass or a coffee table from Walmart. Uh, you, know, you can't mouse on those. They, they're too reflective and it, it shards the laser light in different directions so it can't track it. Then you need a mouse pad. So I made the argument that people still use mouse pads. She said no. So then everywhere I go, I've been looking for mouse pads. Now, like there's a mouse pad on those computers over there on the studio have mouse pads on that side. The computers on this side, none of them have mouse pads. Uh, Lucy Chapman, KGOR, she posted a uh, video. She was bragging about her handful of new pens. She's like, I love getting new pens. And in the background, there was this ratty ass old mouse pad just chilling out back there. And it had like marks on it and stains on it, coffee spilled on it. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, see right there, you need a new mouse pad. And she was like, yes, please give me one. And I'm like, okay, so now we're an influencer giving away mouse pads. So that was my thought, was mouse pads. Um, what have we done in the past? Well, we've done backpacks, we've done pens, we've done mouse pads. Um, we never did shirts or hats. It never really struck me that people would want to wear, just for the sake of wearing, like, oh, a Shark Innovations hat, you know, I don't know. And then it's, it's kind of confusing. We're kind of protective of who wears our shirts uh, because they, we come to your door to work on your computer. So it's kind of like UPS doesn't sell their uniforms online. Like you can look like a UPS man for Halloween. They don't. They don't do that. Um, that's why UPS sells their own socks, and you have to turn in your socks when you lose your job at UPS or leave your job. Um, so what? What do you guys want to see? Nope. No mouse pads here. Blake says no mouse pads, and he's a top fan, so I have to take that seriously. Lovely Kimberly, plus one there. Get one that keeps the computer from sleeping. Well, I can change your settings to keep your computer from sleeping. That's easy. Now, here's the thing. There's the giveaway mouse pads. These are the mouse pads that cost 20 cents a piece to make. Ye old foam square mouse pad. Put your mouse on it, you mouse around. Um, there are some pretty wicked mouse pads now. Now, these are not like giveaway mouse pads. They're, they're too expensive. They're like six, eight bucks a piece. And so to give them away would be, from a promotional item standpoint, these are promotional items that you're going to give away in a smaller groups. Like, we, best of Omaha, there's like 1,500 people that walk through there. Um, so... At six bucks a piece, that's pretty expensive stuff for a trade show. But there are mouse pads now. That it's like a giant pad that goes under the entire keyboard and mouse. So you have your keyboard, and there's an area here for your mouse. But it's like a leather pad that goes under the whole thing, which I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. It's stupid, but it's kind of interesting because it goes under the whole thing from a, an aesthetic point of view. It looks kind of cool. Um, they have mouse pads now that have built-in uh, Q chargers, uh, the wireless chargers for your phone. So if your phone has wireless charging capability, when you're not using your computer, you can set your mouse to the side and take your phone and put it on the mouse pad, and it'll charge your phone. Now, I don't know how many times people hang around their desk when they're not using their mouse to charge on their... So it's kind of gimmicky, you know, but when I, when I said that around the text, they were all like, ooh. You know, it's gimmicky, but it's kind of a ooh, and that's what you want in a promo item. Unfortunately, they're like 6 or $8 a piece, so they're pretty expensive. And you have to run a cable from your mouse pad then, right? <clears throat> so I'm just trying to figure out, guys, what mouse pads, if, if a mouse pad doesn't work, Blake, I hear you, buddy. You don't want a mouse pad. I got it. You want a thumb drive. Okay, here's the problem with promotional thumb drives. They're all trash. So you don't get a, like a 16-gig a SanDisk Cruiser thumb drive in a giveaway. The ones that you get at trade shows are the cheapest Chinese knockoff thumb drives you can buy. And because of that, they fail a lot. So a lot of times we end up doing data recovery off thumb drives that are, um, you know, like, you know, the doctors get them from the pill companies. So it'll be a, a pill flash drive comes in and we're like, what's this? And it's like, oh, I got it at some trade show or whatever. And when we go to do the data recovery, because it's an unknown brand and unknown origin, we have no way of doing chip off recoveries. We have no way of getting the data back off of that. So the terrifying thought I have is we make, we go off to, you know, get these ye old cheapo flash drives that uh, a cheap flash drive, for example, uh, just to give you an idea on cost side, um, the cost to have a promo item 16 gigabyte flash drive made 
is going to be about $12 a drive. So they're not cheap. Um, we can get the really cheap ones in like an 8 gig variety or a 2 gig variety. They're usually a buck fifty to two fifty a piece, and that's what you're going to get at the trade shows typically. Um, but they're unknown origin chip, so we don't know what we're getting for chipsets in there. And if they go bad, and someone brought it in for a data recovery, how embarrassing would it be to have to do a data recovery first of all off a Schrock Innovations flash drive? Secondly, off a Schrock Innovations flash drive that we can't recover because we don't know who made it. <laughs> I can see that going sideways on us. So I can look into it. I'm not too hot on the flash drive. Now there are some cool flash drives though. Again, the wow factor. They have uh, flash drives now that are like this. It's a credit card that goes in your wallet, and there's a little door that like, so here's the card, and there's a door that flips up, and then you stick that into the computer, and it's like a credit card flash drive that you can keep in your wallet. And I thought, that's kind of cool. That's, and you can print a nice logo on it. It looks like a credit card. It's a pretty cool little logo. Um, you know, I thought it would be kind of a neat thing to give away. So maybe something like that. But again, you're, you're dealing with the same problem there. But at least they're made of cardboard, right? So what do you expect from a cardboard flash drive? If it fails on you, that's your own dumb fault for saving your company QuickBooks file on a cardboard flash drive. I'm just saying. All right, let's see. USB drive is the same thing I was thinking with Drive Advisor and a trial of Secure Updater. That's, yeah, that's true. We could put trial software on there. Thumb drive, thumb drive. Everybody wants thumb drives. Okay. Thumb drives it is. Okay. Pens that have an end that you can use as a stylus on your phone. My vet gives them away. Okay. Gotcha. Candy bars with a couple of special tickets in the wrapper for a special prize. Gosh, Kevin, that sounds familiar. I swear that there's somebody, somebody with a with a wonky name has done that before. Oh, somebody tell me who it is. I can't remember. For the life of me. God, it's giving me the willies. I can't remember. I'm getting old. All right, anyway. Um, let's see. Kimberly is right. Oh, Carolyn. And is Kimberly even connected right now? Oh, look at that. It was a rough baby night last night. She's not even with us right now, so... <laughs> Shh, she's not right. All right, someone's going to tag her. Kimberly Schrock is right. Like, oh, no, don't do it. All right, get one that keeps the computer from sleeping. I'm scrolling back down here. Pens, candy bars, Kimberly's right. Mouse pad, please. I have a glass top on my desk. Keith, I was hired to figure out why a computer kept overheating. When I opened the computer, I could see that the person was a smoker. Cooling fans were plugged up. Did the best I could getting that gunk off. It was too late. Yeah, the, Keith, it, it is not fun trying to remove that, that tar. It's, it's literally tar from a fan blade. Um, I mean, imagine you have a fan in your house, and it's turning all the time, and, you're, and there's just dirt stuck to it. After a while, it becomes perma-dirt, right? Um, and it's, you, know, you can clean it, but you're going to spend way more on labor cleaning a fan than you would spend just replacing the fan. A notebook to record all your passwords. You're not supposed to do that, Kevin. You're not supposed to write them all down. You're supposed to keep them in your noggin. I still use the thin flashlight you gave away years ago. I forgot about the flashlights. Yeah, we those flashlights, we still have some of those. We, we kept about 100 of those back. When people order computers and stuff uh, online from the website, we throw little gifts in the bag. So we kept some of our backpacks and flashlights back to have little add-ons that we could just toss in there, a little added value, unexpected, pleasant thing. But yeah, they're a magnetic flashlight. It sticks to the fridge, and it's got a push button on it with two LED bulbs. And so it's, uh, it's really handy. We have one stuck to our breaker box, actually. Because, you know, you get down to the power goes out, you're down at the breaker box, and you're like, I got to, how do I turn the power? I can't see anything. And you you know there's one, you can feel it. Oh, there it is. And you just have to squeeze it. It doesn't, there's no switch. You just squeeze it. And it's like, click, comes on. Oh, there, I can reset everything. It's pretty handy stuff. So, yeah, flashlights would be good again. We could do that again. Oh, hey, look, guys, the lovely Kimberly has joined the show. Everybody, you know, everybody, Kim, says that mouse pads are the way to go. I'm telling you, nobody has said any, aside from, hey, give the flashlights away again, there have been no other ideas, not a single one. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, you better start working on those mouse pad designs because, uh, once again, <coughs> who's right? Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys won't narc me out, will you? <laughs> All righty. So, so that, I'm still taking comments on that. You can still comment about what you want to see uh, for promotional items that we give away. <coughs> so I'm literally asking you, what do you want for free? Uh, question two is a little more complicated. Um, we have been looking at the way the computer world has been changing and will be changing over the next few years. Our name is Schrock Innovations. Our job is to keep you ahead of the curve and keep you in the best possible computing position that you can be in given the world around you. So the question here is, how do we do that going forward? 
computers are getting less and less repairable. And there will come a time at some point in the future, maybe after 5G is proficient around the world, you know, and everything is, it's, you know, every farmhouse has it. <laughs> See, Marine mouse pad. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to like that. Bam, right there. In your face, lovely Kimberly. Sorry. <clears throat> celebrating it. Did I do a little dance in the chair? Uh, <laughs> so we've got to keep you ahead of the curve. So with computers becoming less and less repairable, problems with computers are becoming more and more catastrophic. At the same time, um, manufacturers, and no matter how much we preach on the radio show about buying a modular computer or buying a solid state laptop, there are people who are just not going to do it. There are people who are going to say, I'd rather just go have that HP. Or, hey, this, this has a, a weird feature that I want. That if I went to Schrock, Schrock could put in a laptop for me. We can put, we can get your fingerprint readers. We can get your screens that flip over backwards. We can get your touch screens. We can get your hand gestures. I mean, we can do all that stuff. But most of our customers don't want that. So we don't carry it on hand. But everything we build is custom. So we can do all that stuff. So anyway, the idea behind this is we take a computer our normal computer line, let's say, and we say, you put down a, a certain deposit down on the computer, and think, okay, let's use the, uh, the, the, the cheapo computers as the example, because that's honestly where we're going to start. One of the important things we have to figure out is how many of these things are going to walk away. How many people are going to plunk down a $100 deposit, pay the first month at 25 bucks, and then take the computer and never come back and never make another payment. Um, that's going to happen. And especially as we move into new markets where we don't have an established customer base that we know and trust and that knows and trusts us. Um, you know, we, we open our doors for the first day and, hey, Heidi, ho, everybody, no credit check, come get a computer. All of a sudden, we're rent a center, you know. Um, so we're talking about doing this in a very controlled way. We have so many computers that we release per batch. Um, there's going to be a waiting list to get on that on that list to get a computer from the batch. Uh, there'll be a cost to getting on the waiting list. We're thinking about the Tesla model here. So you'll put your deposit down to get on the waiting list. And then we know you're serious about it. And then once you're on the wait, most scammers aren't going to get on a waiting list. Once you're on the waiting list, you know, maybe each month we do 10, 20, 30 computers a month. Um, and I anticipate we'll have hundreds of people that sign up for the list. As the program goes on, we slowly release more computers over time because the more computers we have out there, the less sensitive we are to one computer walking away. You see what I'm saying? So we want to get them in the hands of the people we know and trust first. But the idea here is there's three different ways you can buy a computer. We're always just going to sell computers at Schrock. You can come in and you can say, I want a computer. I'm going to put my money on the table and you can buy a computer. You own the computer. You're responsible. This is the model now. You're responsible for the maintenance. Now, we'll try to help you out with sales and special offers and reminders and things, but you're responsible to get it maintenance, just like you change the oil in your car. You're responsible for making sure you have antivirus software. Again, we'll try to help you out. Hey, you need Endpoint. Every time you come in for a maintenance checkup, hey, you sure you don't want Endpoint? Uh, you know, we removed some stuff here. Your McAfee ain't doing the job. Uh, you need Secure Updater. Every time you come in for a maintenance checkup, hey, we updated like 37 programs on your computer. Are you sure you don't want that to be updated in real time so you don't get hacked? That'd be great. Um, you know, extended warranties. My gosh, I don't understand. We still have a few customers that just don't do them. And I'm like, we give you your money back if you don't use it. So if you need it, we're literally fixing your computer for free. And there's nothing we can fix for 125 bucks. Just the parts, the labor alone's 110, and the part is going to be more than 10 bucks or 15 bucks. I can guarantee you that. Even that CPU fan is a $40 fan. So, what the heck? You know, as we go through this, why don't you buy the warranties, people? It blows my mind. There's just some people who, no matter what you say, will not buy the warranty, no matter how good of a deal it is. So what if we threw that in? You know, because I don't see you renting a computer basically for two years, and having it break, and then not, and then continuing to pay for the rent on a broken computer. So we, we got to figure out the way that this works out. So there's three options. Option one is you're going to keep the computer. You're going to buy it, you're going to keep it, you're going to hold on to it until you're ready to throw it away, then you're going to buy a new one. That's exactly how it works now. Nothing changes. That's option one. Option two, we do the lease rental agreement. We set it at a two-year term. So it's, it's short enough that you, you can replace the computer. If you get one you don't like, you're going to have it for 24 months, and then you're going to replace it with a new one. You're not going to get one you don't like because you get to see the computer before you take it. Okay? So, but... Long and short of it is, is, if you're a person that wants a new computer every two years, you could have a new computer every two years. The technology doesn't really change that much in two years, but you could do that. Option three is we go for a longer term, 
like four years or five years, kind of the term that most people in Nebraska try to keep their computers for. We know our computers will last that long, so it works out. Uh, that, that longer term is actually conversely to being cheaper. You'd think longer term, lower price, but it's actually a little more expensive because think you're using more free services over time. Um, so when we sit down, the way that we're going to market this out, uh, I believe anyway, is we're going to sit down and we're going to say, listen, if you buy the computer, this is the cost of the computer, and this is the cost of all the things that we recommend you do with the computer. The security, the maintenance, the extended warranties, the safe upgrades, the things that you do repeatedly, over and over and over, once or twice a year. And that's this is what it'll cost, and you can compare that to a two-year period or a five-year period. Okay. So this is how much money you're going to spend on your computer over a five-year period. Would you rather spend all that money in real time as you need to, or would you rather sign an agreement that says, hey, you agree to use our computer for five years, you're going to put down a deposit, it's a $600 computer, you're going to put down a $100 deposit, okay? And that just to show that you've got some skin in the game, you're not going to just take the computer for 25 bucks and walk out the door. Price will be $25 to $35 a month for the various levels, somewhere in that range. And the only things you won't be able to add, this is the computer only. So this does not include monitors, keyboards, mouse, accessories, peripherals, things like that. So this is a laptop by itself or a tower by itself, how we currently sell all of our computers. Because most people have monitors they like, or they have keyboards and mice that they like. So there's no, those aren't going to be things that you're going to want to, to necessarily have to repurchase, and they're not necessarily things that we want to sell you on a lease or a loan. So those are the options. I want to know today, and we're going to have a poll up with more details later on, but I just want to get a general feeling, a general consensus for which option you guys like best. So option one is you just keep everything the way it is. Option two is you get a new computer pretty frequently. You pay about 25 bucks a month. Uh, for the entry-level computers, the, the price per month is a little bit higher. There's a formula behind it. It might be like $27 a month for an Endeavor, for example. Um, and then you still are responsible for all of your own security stuff, right? So you still, option two, you're still buying everything normal. You're still, you get maintenance checkups, and you get safe upgrades, and you get a warranty. That's all you get. But like preventative maintenance, that's on you. If, uh, if the computer gets infected with a virus, you know, that's on you because you have to choose whether you're going to use endpoint or not which gives you the virus protection. So there's that. Now option three is the full Monty. You get everything in the computer. It's going to be 30 to $39 a month, but you get everything. You get endpoint, you get secure updater, you get drive advisor, you get warranties, you get uh, ma free maintenance. Uh, basically, it's a fire and forget computer and you're trusting us as your managed service provider to make sure your computer is running the way you want it to run. And then at the end of the term, whether that's four years or five years, we haven't decided yet, you get to get a brand new computer, no cost. There's like the only cost would be if you wanted us to transfer the information from your old computer to your new computer, a data transfer cost, which is the same cost that you have now if you buy a new computer. So otherwise, most people can transfer their own data these days. Um, so if you want us to do it, we can do it. If you want to do it yourself, you can do it yourself. Completely up to you. But you get you can come in after your term is up and say, I want a new computer, and here's your new computer, guys. Here's the old computer. Thanks, appreciate it. What do you think? Um, honestly, it's kind of the way cell phones are sold right now. And uh, I, one, the reason I like it is it lets us build a relationship with a customer and maintain that relationship over a long period of time. I have always found, after doing this for 20 plus years, that any time you take the long view in a customer relationship, you're taking the right, the right view, even if that long view is not comfortable in the short run. So why would this not be comfortable for us in the short run? We're trading. $600 computer sales for $125 sales with $25 payments going forward in time. There are some cash flow implications to that, uh, which is one of the reasons why we're going to limit this so it doesn't go crazy and have like a thousand computers sold in the first week and you know we can't fulfill the, the orders basically. Um, so we don't have any of this infrastructure in place yet. We're, we're talking about this is going to be a 2020 project when we launch this. Uh, this could be our big January 2020 push, the big sale for our 21st anniversary. This could be that, okay? Um, if that's the case, I just want to know how many of you are interested. Uh, how many of you would take your old computer and ditch it and get this new computer and keep it and pay the 25 bucks a month on it? It has to be on a credit card. It has to be auto pay, you know, all the normal stuff that you would expect on a subscription. All right, I'm going to scroll down and look at comments here because I've got to get rolling today. I've uh, got, got a football game with my little guy today. 
All right, still use a mouse pad. Morning, just had my computer checked and cleaned by you. Now there are two more drives, a 232 and 100 megabyte called System Reserve. What are those? Oh, those are uh, partitions. Uh, the System Reserve partition, and you shouldn't have letters. Those shouldn't be visible. Uh, but the System Reserve partition is a Windows partition. You don't want to mess with that. And the 232 megabyte partition is the security boot partition. Uh, again, if you tried to mess with them, they you won't be able to mess with them. They're usually not visible, though. I wonder if maybe we cloned your hard drive, and maybe that's why they're visible. Uh, we can take a look at that for you, though. But yeah, there's nothing to worry about there. Those partitions are always there. They were just usually hidden. Think about all the phone companies that lease iPhones. I can always turn it in for the next. Yeah, that's that's the idea. And Mark, that's why I said I know there are going to be people who they like to own their stuff, and they they want to own it. They don't want to have to worry about a payment. Totally get that. Picture and sound just froze. Hopefully that's just you, Don, because I went through a long old thing. Blake likes option two, which is kind of a hybrid where you still pay for some things on an annual basis, but you uh, you get a lot of it included in the cost of the computer. Secure updater and endpoint could also be rolled into the lease fee. Uh, cell phone stores sometimes require the warranty and the phone is paid off for those programs. Uh, yeah, that's what we're thinking on the, the higher end one, the, the, more ex the most expensive one will include everything. And the reason it's more expensive is because these are things you would normally be paying for on an ongoing basis. And we're actually selling them to you at a discount and then letting you pay for them over time. So it's, it's weird, right? It doesn't make, it's upside down bizarro logic that you get a lower price and you get payment terms on it. Um, but again, what we're talking about doing here is retaining customers. We want you to move into a Schrock computer and then never have a reason to leave, never want to leave. Because even if you get a computer that you're not happy with, after the term, you get, you get to get rid of it and you get to get a new computer. Um, option three says Andy, okay. Or option three at $49 a month for 36 months. Okay, so that's the thing. There's a trade-off between how many months we have you do it and how much per month it is. So maybe the better question, and this will be the last thing because then I got to roll. Maybe the better question is, how much would you pay per month for a computer that you didn't have to worry about anything? You know, except for physical damage, okay? If you crush it under a truck, then there'll be some kind of a, uh, a fee to get a replacement unit or something. It won't be like the whole cost of a computer, but it'll be like another 100 bucks or something and you get a replacement. But how much would you pay per month for a computer that has everything rolled in? So we're talking about, if we quantify this, let's just say it's the cheap computer again, 600 bucks, and you're going to get endpoint and how long how many years let's say three years so you get endpoint for three years uh so that's 190 it's 200 more dollars so that's 800 bucks secure updater would be 75 dollars. so now we're at 875 safe upgrade is 50 bucks a time twice a year so that's 300 more dollars um so you can see how this is adding up pretty quickly extended warranties are 125 a year so there's another 375 um, so let's just keep you know, 600, let's say it's a $1,500 three-year cost on the computer. You guys didn't know you spent that much on your computers, did you? Um, so that much over that period of time, let's see, so let's just say it was $1,500 over divided by 36 months. Uh, you're talking about $41.66 a month. So if we gave it to you for $39.99 a month, you'd actually have a little bit of savings. So there you go. So I guess at what price, what price is the cutoff? You know, 25 is kind of the price of entry because that's the cheapest we could do it and, and actually get back the cost of the computer, <laughs> not thinking about the services on top of it. Uh, and I'm hesitant to go over 50 because I'm, I'm not sure, unless it's a really high-end performance computer, $50 a month is, is a lot to spend. Um, now, the other problem is I'm not even sure we're going to do our high-end computers on this because, again, we're talking about the difference between sending a $600 computer out the door with a $100 deposit and sending a $1,200 computer out the door with a $100 deposit. Maybe the deposit is more, maybe the deposit is 200 That doesn't make me feel a whole lot better uh, because we're going to have some people that come in and do this simply to take the computer out the door and then leave the state or take it apart for parts and then it's gone and we'll never get another payment. So there's, there's always that. Okay, so cheap computer, 30 bucks. Holiday special type, 50 bucks. Okay. Holiday, uh, wow, a holiday special. I don't even, wow. I suppose eventually we could get to the point where we're doing holiday special on, on a lease like that. Uh, wow, that would be, because you think about that, that, that the hardware starts at $1,500. that would be like a $3,000 computer lease. Um, so if we, if, if we did that over 36 months, I mean, we're looking at a, a monthly cost of like 84 bucks. 
probably seventy nine ninety nine to give you a value on it. That's something we probably want to stretch out. Holiday special is a ten year computer. If we stretch that over five years, because nobody replaces their holiday special in two years, because they're just so crazy. Um, if we uh, if we did that, if we said three thousand dollars over a five year term, uh, over sixty months, that's fifty bucks a month. So yeah, we, you could you could definitely have a holiday special at that price, given that. But wow. So 39, okay, so what I'm seeing here is 25 to 50, which is kind of what we thought. Yeah, it does, Robert. Uh, the, the higher end one would include the safe upgrades. It would include everything. Literally, you would have everything. Um, we even talked about the possibility of rolling a Shrock Desk subscription into the high end one. Uh, then the numbers get stupid. Like, Shrock Desk costs 30 bucks a month. So if, you, if we throw a $30 a month Shrock Desk on top of a $50 a month subscription and we don't charge you $30 more for it, I mean, it becomes stupid. Why wouldn't you lease at that point? Um, and you know, the thing is you're never getting, the reason I hesitate to call it leasing is you are not getting any ownership of the computer at all in this, pro, in this program. At the end of the term, you have a choice. You can just keep your computer and keep paying the monthly amount. If you want to, you can keep doing that forever. Or you can turn it in and get a new laptop and keep paying the monthly amount. That's fine. Or you could turn it in, get your $100 deposit back, and call it good and go buy something else if you wanted to. So you can get out still and you get your deposit back, um, but we get the laptop back at the end. And a couple of reasons that's important. Number one, it gives us a nice supply of repair parts for people who choose to keep going in their computers um, you know, going forward. Uh, number two, I don't honestly know what we're going to do with all the, the laptops and desktops that get turned back in. It's not like we can, maybe we, we develop a Schrock Innovation certified used thing. <laughs> I don't know, we've never done used computers before. I'm not big on it, but I suppose there are only certain, the, the fans wear out, the hard drives wear out, uh, the memory wears out. If we replace the memory, the hard drive, and the fan system, the cooling system, maybe the palm rest so it looks shiny and new. I mean, we're talking, you know, we replace all in the battery, I guess the battery too. So yeah, there's quite a bit. But we can maybe sell them as re refurbished computers or recertified computers, possibly. Um, you know, maybe. So anyway, think about a higher deposit for of of a thousand dollars for a holiday special. Type. See, I, that's the thing. If we said a thousand dollar deposit for a holiday special, holiday special is fifteen hundred bucks. A lot of people might just say, "I'll pay the fifteen hundred bucks." You know. Uh, but you're right, though. I mean, if it's a thousand dollar holiday special, and you were like, "Hey, that's five hundred dollars off." And I know after, and it's a five-year computer, at the end of this of five years, I know I want a new computer anyway, so, you know, maybe. And then, of course, at the end of the term, if you, oh, wow, holy cow, if you did the holiday special like that, at the end of the five-year term, you could turn it in and get the next holiday special at no cost. It would be just like, whoop, free. That would be pretty flippin' phenomenal right there. Um, speaking of holiday special, sneak peek stuff, uh, we're looking at the possibility of a Ryzen 7 chip this year. Uh, we're looking at the possibility of 32 gigs of RAM this year, terabyte solid state, backup drive, um, and I keep saying last question. Last question. We want to do something special with the monitor this year for the holiday special. Um, so we have a couple options. We, we can go with, if I go with a Ryzen 7, I literally have a cost budget of about $110 for a monitor. Okay, so that means I can give you a full HD monitor, a 23-inch full HD monitor, just like we did last year. That's about that cost, for our cost. Um, now, if I, if I shave a few things here and there and free up some budget in that $1,500, because we sell these for cost, I could do something cooler like a curved monitor, uh, which is, they look really spiffy. Uh, they don't really, there's no real advantage to it. And if you do a lot of spreadsheets, having the lines kind of curving sometimes messes with you a little bit, but, um, but they look phenomenal. Uh, and they're, they're just cool to see on your desk. It's like space age tech. Uh, so I could do something like that. Or if we significantly drop some of the specifications of the computer, maybe drop it to a Ryzen 5, for example, instead of a 7, I could put a 2K monitor on the computer, uh, which would be a much higher resolution picture. And that sounds like a really good deal. One of the things that some customers realize or don't realize, though, is when you go to a 2K or 4K resolution, everything gets smaller on the screen. So your icons will be the size of your pinky nail instead of the size of your thumbnail. And your text will be you know, six point font instead of 12 point font. And uh, then you have to, to fix that, you have to bounce the resolution up, which defeats the purpose of having a 2K monitor in the first place. So 
just general questions, general thoughts out there. If anybody has a thought on that, post it now, and then uh, I'll know kind of where to go. I, I'm not leaning any particular direction right now. I just, it's the 20th anniversary holiday special, guys. I'm thinking back to the first holiday special. We were the first company in Nebraska to have flat panel monitors with their computers. We were the first company in Nebraska to sell Windows 7 on a computer, you know, with Windows XP. It was the first company to have Windows XP on a computer. We were the first company to offer a gig of RAM in a computer. We were the first company to offer a 100 gigabyte hard drive in a computer. I mean, wow, that was the holiday special, man. And so I want to do that again this year. You know, it's like, that's going to be crazy. Most people get eight gigs of RAM in a computer. I want to put 32 in there. You know, most people get a 120 or 240 gig solid state. I want a thousand gig solid state in there. Um, you know, we want a backup drive in it. Uh, we want... Uh, a graphics card that allows me to go two monitors, you know, if I want to. Um, I, I want that better Ryzen chip. I want the, the new generation Ryzen chip in there. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, do we go with a new case? There's all these things we try to figure out. So anyway, if anybody has any thoughts on the monitor, don't forget to figure in price increases as parts as prices go up when your lease is over and the new computer is the next lease going to be the same monthly price. Okay, this is interesting, Diane. Be or Deneen, excuse me, Deneen. Uh, because Computer, computers and technology are deflationary, actually. So what ends up happening is if you take you, the speed of the computer and you treat it like a commodity, like the number of gigahertz or the amount of RAM or the size of the hard drive, you, you came up with a formula that quantified all that and said, this is what a computer is. A computer is worth 50 computing units today. The computer that comes out five years from now might be worth 100 computing units but the price will be roughly the same or slightly lower. So the price per computing unit always goes down, almost as a whole. Now the tariffs might screw with that a little bit, but it's just gonna it's gonna take what is a, a huge deflationary curve and make it slightly less deflationary. So I'm confident that we could keep the pricing the same when you sign up for the new term. Now of course it will be a new contract, so we would have to reserve the right to change pricing just in case the whole world changes and you know something crazy happens. But with that said, um, you know, we're, we're talking about computers within classes. So the, we have three classes of computers in laptop and desktop. We have entry level, we have mid-range, and we have high end. And so if you get the high end and you go to get the high end again, you know, the price would stay the same because the price for the high end computers is, our prices on our computers haven't changed in almost a decade um, because we, we basically upgrade, we keep upgrading the hardware in them. We keep giving you more for the money and we keep the prices the same. Um, so yeah, it's it, that's why you can go to Walmart and pick up a $300 laptop because it's got tech from five years ago in it. Um, and it looks like a super sweet deal, but then you get it home and it, it's slower than stock. You know, we don't do that. I mean, we, we keep the technology increasing in the computers. In fact, uh, we have, uh, we've already done our laptop line. Uh, the laptop line has been raised up and we're going to be raising up the desktop line soon too. Yep, Don, your 13 holiday special still kicking. So. All right, so there we go, guys. So I, I kind of have a good feeling about this. Now, that'll also give Kara some information. I want to welcome Kara aboard, by the way. Kara is uh, the newest member of the Schrock Interactive team. She is going to be uh, helping us out with the social media feeds a little bit, taking some of that stress off me, uh, <laughs> and also uh, making sure that the websites are delivering you the content that you want in a timely way uh, and getting it to you in the feed in the form you want, making sure that the podcasts are getting to your iPhones making sure that the Facebook posts are getting to your timelines, things like that. Uh, making sure to tell me, hey, Thor, make sure you ask for reviews on this service or that service this week. Uh, today, Facebook recommendations, guys. Love to have them. Uh, if you, you want to click uh, recommend, or I recommend Schrock Innovations, you know, for all your computer repair needs, it'll list it as a recommendation, and uh, everything will be good. As always, if, you, if your friends, family, relatives have computer issues, please refer them to us. That's the, the best compliment we can receive. Um, we do offer free hour of labor coupons that are available. It's an honor, do not offer situation. So if they just come in the door, we're not going to offer it to them. But if they come in and say, hey, I want the new customer coupon, we give it to them. And it's a free hour of labor. So that's kind of an inside way for you to save your family 100 bucks. A lot of times we can fix stuff for free, $110. So let them know about the new customer coupon. So if you see somebody struggling with computer stuff, let them know, hey, Take it to Schrock. They'll fix it. They can fix it for free for you. First customer, first hour is free for new customers. And uh, we'd be happy to help out anyone you send our way. And we will treat them with the utmost respect so that your recommendation is earned and deserved. 
All right, I've got a real guy's got a quick uh, kiddo football game I got to get over to. Uh, rough night with the babies last night, so my wife needs to uh, get some time to get ready this morning. And uh, my voice is starting to go out. So, yeah, it's time to end it. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you again next week. Enjoy the week. Enjoy the holiday tomorrow. Uh, we will be closed tomorrow for Labor Day. Uh, so just keep that in mind, and uh, we will see you all again next Sunday. Have a great day.